The peak of Alabama's tornado season will soon be here. It will mean busy days and nights for the National Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. They are the first line in forecasting severe weather caused by thunderstorms, tornadoes and fires. Tonight we take you in depth with some of the best meteorologists in the world, sharing their insights into Alabama's tornado season, the changes needed to the warning process, and the weather question facing Alabama officials, even they can't answer. It is often the first sign of severe weather. In the chance of strong, maybe severe storms, there is a level two out of level five risk statewide, all 67 Alabama counties. Rich Thompson, lead forecaster at the Storm Prediction Center, is one of those tasked with issuing the tornado watches we so closely pay attention to. So we're trying to assess what's the high end potential and then What's the probability that we're actually going to get storms in an environment that supports those kind of outcomes? Most of the meteorologists here have at least 15 years of experience. Thompson has worked some of the biggest tornado outbreaks in history, including April 27, 2011. He admits tornadoes have become more frequent in the southeast in the last decade compared to the plain states, often known as Tornado Alley. Thompson notes Alabama's season is longer, lasting November all the way through May. But he also says there's an important question that must be asked here. Is it a permanent thing? I highly doubt it because it's been busy before, it's been slow before. Thompson says he's frustrated when a tornado watch forecast doesn't pan out like last week here in Alabama. We have a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe storms for the western and central counties of the state. But the biggest frustration is often when he gets it right. It's a little bit demoralizing when you think I did the best I could and there's still all of these injuries and fatalities. And it's kind of like, I, you know, sometimes it's just a helpless feeling. We don't know what we what more we can do to help people. That's the work of social scientists like Kim Clockow McLean. Her goal, understanding human behavior so the weather enterprise can better warn the public. Many of her findings are challenging how we understand severe weather coverage. The ability to watch weather broadcast through mobile streaming technology means people have more time to react. It's a point she says broadcasters need to realize. We can encourage people not just to sit in their shelters for 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes, but that it can be okay as long as you know that you're close by you can stay in touch with that information. This has some benefits and some of the research we've done with people who go through events, it can be tough to stay in a shelter and be disconnected from your environment for a really long period of time and people who come out of that come away feeling maybe less powerful in how they could have responded and a little disempowered. Mental trauma can last long after storm debris has been picked up. McLean says surviving storms is about where you are. Her work shows for those living in Alabama's manufactured housing, lead time and warnings is often equal to the time it takes to reach the nearest community shelter. What could really help people in that situation is to have something that's a little longer than a warning and a little shorter than a watch and a little more specific about where it could be hit something that's a gap filler. And those exact technologies are actually things we're working on here at the Severe Storms Lab. Just how important is where you're sheltering? Consider the survival rate for an EF5 tornado in a site-built structure. Would you guess the answer is nearly 99%? It can be survivable. The key is it's so, so important to be in a site-built structure and not in a more detached structure. So things like mobile manufactured homes. It's a question Alabama school systems also face when dismissing students on severe weather days. Some will inevitably return to homes which are not as safe as the schools they've left. Even this scientist doesn't seem to have a universal answer to this very real question. I have nothing but sympathy for public safety officials right now in the way that they have to navigate those choices. It was a fascinating visit, and our interviews covered even more topics. Are parts of the state really safer than others from tornado threats? Well, the short answer is no, but the why also tells us a lot. You can find that part of our story tonight on ABC3340.com later this evening. By the way, this visit also gave us a chance to witness a moment of history at the Storm Prediction Center. The young woman you see there, meteorologist Elizabeth Lightman, became the first woman in the center's history to issue their own watch. Congratulations.